We're keeping the momentum going today. We've got a great guest for you, Spiro Didis, who is, of course, the play-by-play announcer for CBS Sports, covering the NFL, calling college football, college basketball for them. You've seen him calling games for the Lakers, the Knicks, the Nets, the Jets. He's really one of the best out there, in my opinion. Super excited to have him on today. Let me bring him in here. Spiro Didis, welcome to Terrific Talk. Hey, Tom. Um, I just want to apologize in advance for the uh, for the dip in your ratings. Bradley oh, Alley is way cooler than me. Podcast last. Did you go to college with Tony Reale? We did. Yeah, Tony was uh, was a year ahead of me. So, yep, Florida Mafia. Uh, he graduated in 2000. I was uh, class of 01. And uh, man, it's hard to believe so many years have passed. But uh, yeah, we were we were buddies buddies in the Bronx for uh, for three of my four years. It was uh, it was pretty cool. Did you work with him? Because he was telling me that he wanted to be a play by play guy, just like you. Were you guys working together? What was your relationship like? Oh yeah, we we did games together. You know. He do play by play for half. I would do color. We'd flip flop, um, and it was kind of that deal. When you go to Fordham and you're a broadcast student, basically they they divvy up the games amongst the you know the top three or four guys in each class. And so for I'd say probably his last two years, um, his senior year and my and his junior year, we did we did more than a handful of games together. You know, and, and plus we were so so often together on the road traveling. You know, for Fordham men's basketball. every Wednesday um, up in Keating Hall for anyone who's been to, to the Rose Hill campus in the Bronx. And, uh, and we built, you know, a pretty good rapport, good, good for a relationship with, you know, amongst the, me and him and a bunch of other guys that were there at that point. And uh, it was just a really, it was a really fun time in, in our lives. And so I, I, I can't speak for Tony, but uh, it was just a really neat part of my life and, and that, you know, part of my college career. He says he wants to take over for Alex Trebek on Jeopardy. Did he ever tell you that? No, that's the first I had heard, you know, when I, I listened to uh, to that part of the podcast. I mean, you can, Tony can do whatever he wants. I mean, we all knew Tony, and I knew he wanted to do play-by-play, but we all knew in the back of our minds, with all the personality he has, classic New York accent, he can he can do whatever he wants. You know, I mean, he's, he's just so good. He's, he, he can talk about any number of, of subjects. I even think sports limits him to a certain extent. I think he can host a show where it's, where it's life, it's politics, it's, you know, it's anything under the sun. He's just, he's that talented, I think. So, let's talk about you now. Enough of Tony. Like, a lot of broadcasters, <laughs> you knew from an early age you wanted to, you know, do play-by-play for a living. What drew you to broadcasting? You know, it was really weird. People ask me this all the time. Um, I think I was, like, 10 or 11 years old, and, you know, just like everyone else, I'd watch games on Sundays, you know, watch the NFL, and watch the games, listen when I was in the car, um, work. 
to talk about Lightstream. I'm starting to look at cars, our lease is ending, and I want to buy and have the power to negotiate as a cash buyer. I want that advantage, and Lightstream's got me covered. Lightstream Online Lending offers loans for auto, home improvement, and practically anything else at low rates for those with good credit. They offer loans from $5,000 to $100,000. You can choose your funding date as soon as today. It's a great service, very easy to use, and today, my listeners get an additional interest rate discount on top of Lightstream's already low rates. The only way to get this discount is to go to lightstream.com slash terrific. That's lightstream, L-I-G-H-T-S-T-R-E-A-M dot com slash terrific. T-E-R-R-I-F-I-C. Subject to credit approval. Rate includes 0.5% auto pay discount. Terms and conditions apply and offers are subject to change without notice. Visit lightstream.com for more information. You mentioned the Knicks and Marv Albert. Mike Breed, you know, another graduate from Fordham. I know someone, he's, he's been instrumental in your broadcasting career. What's the best advice Mike Breen has given you throughout your career? You know, Mike, uh, it, it, was, it was such a unique opportunity for me. You know, here I am growing up in, in North Jersey listening to Nick Ames and Mike Breen's voice was one of the first that I'd ever heard and, and uh, you know, one of the many number of announcers that really influenced me and, and got me into this profession and wanting to do this for a living. And then uh, I get the next job in 2011 and I get to, you know, to travel with Mike on the plane, pick his brain endlessly and anyone who knows Mike knows that there's no more uh, generous or giving or nice of a man in this industry, which, you know, is not, not always the case, but he, you know, obviously is at the top of the profession and everyone knows how great he is, but for people that know him personally, and I, I think I'm lucky to, to call him a friend at this point, he, he was the perfect mentor for me, and it was just so cool to have him as a resource after so many years of listening to him and watching him on, on TV, um, and he basically told me, just be yourself, you know, uh, Mike, I know you developed the, uh, you know, the bang catchphrase, but, you know, he, he basically was never a guy who wanted the spotlight to be on him, and that's always something that, that I respected about him. The other thing I liked about Mike, and this is not, not something he told me, but something I just kind of uh, took away from his style, and this was more so in the early days when he was doing the radio, but he was very, you know, he, he was critical of the Knicks, but not in a way that was, I think, malicious. Yeah. You know, Mike was the master of, of you know, the subtle little jab or just kind of telling it like it is, but never crossing that line to where, you know, the, the fans of the Knicks would be, you know, like, you know, what's this guy crushing our team for? This is supposed to be our, our voice, you know, the, the voice of the Knicks on the radio and then, and then, of course, TV. But, you know, that was one thing of many that, that, uh, that I kind of took away from, from how Mike broadcasted. I had Joe Buck on this podcast once, and he told me that he still gets nervous before calling games. Do you get nervous before calling games still? Oh, of course. Of course. Of course. Of yeah. course. Yeah. I mean, you know, especially doing the NFL because, you know, the, the prep for an NFL game is, is so broad and it's just never ending, really, you know, until you get to the booth on Sunday morning and, you know, you get into the stadium. You know, first of all, you pull into the parking lot. There's, there's you know, 20,000 people in the lot, you know, tailgating and it's just such a different than an NBA game, and you realize it's a big event. So, you know, you, you realize 
that, that you know you're doing NFL games and this is kind of the pinnacle of, of your profession. You know, if you're certainly if you're a football fan and and you want to perform, you know, week in and week out. And and I know that there are you know lots of guys that are certainly capable of, of doing this job and doing my job. So there's always a pressure to you know to perform and, and to do the best job that you can. So oh yeah, you know as that producer is counting down. Five, four, three, two, one in my ear on Sunday mornings is about as we're getting ready to come on the air. There's always those those feelings of um, of excitement and, and anticipation for sure. Who's a young up and coming play by play announcer who impresses you right now? Well, um, you know I'd have to say my boy Ryan Rucco, you know from Fordham, who's who's not really kind of a, a rookie anymore. I mean he's, he's killing it for ESPN. He's doing such a great job. And yeah. He you know will hook up every time he's out in LA. I just got a chance to see him last week and. I'm just so proud of him and so happy for him. Uh, Mike Yam, who is another one of my contemporaries a couple years after me at Fordham, who's now basically the, the face of, of the Pac-12 TV network out in San Francisco. Um, he's doing his thing. Andrew Bogish, uh, who works for Sirius. Yep. And the, the, the number of guys that have come out of that program um, is really incredible. And, you know, I know Newhouse and Syracuse get to the pub and rightfully so. I mean, some of the all-time greats have come out of there. But I gotta say that the Florida Mafia we're, we're we're gaining a little bit slowly, you know. But uh, this this crop of guys that came out, you know, I'd say from like 2002 to where we stand right now, it's been pretty impressive. Isn't it? That'll do it. Special thank you to Spiro for coming on the podcast. We'll see you next week.